we are. Here's the brand new 2021 Bass Cat Era, Ira. I call it the Era. I don't know how you say it, but that's how I say it. Um, so yeah, this is it. We got the Gatorland wrap on it. Huge shout out to uh, Rappable in South Carolina. We got the Gatorland Neat Companies. They're the main title sponsors this year. Again, uh, great companies, amazing people there and uh, just love to represent them all across the country. So again, another Bass Cat boat. Love Bass Cat, great company. Huge shout out to Rick Pierce, the owner of Bass Cat. Uh, amazing human being. Known him since I was a little kid and just a great company to work with and, uh, and to represent also. So, uh, so real quick, we're gonna start off on the outside. I'm just gonna explain to you some things that I have, some features on this boat. And then we'll dive inside. We'll show you underneath the boat. This year they did change the deck layout on this boat. So it's a little different from what I've ran in the past. For those of you that are interested in the deck layout on this boat, if you're wondering how it's set up, I'm going to show you guys. So also running some new mounts this year, some Boat Logics mounts, custom built for this boat. If you have a bass cat and you're in the, uh, looking for some new mounts, make sure you check them out. So real quick, we're going to start off on the outside. Um, pretty basic. Bass cat makes their own trailers. They make great trailers. Um, as you can see, we got a step right here. Got the Fulton uh, Jack winch here on the boat. Um, you know, running lights on here, just the regular lights on here that Bass Cat puts on. Cool little light here, got the logo on it. They also have a light up front there that shines down and has the, uh, has the logo on it as well. Went with the black Stalker rims. This is the third uh, set of rims I've had. I've always ran the Stalkers since they've been out. I've had them on three boats now. Never had any issues with them. They put great tires on their trailers too. Uh, these happen to be, these are general tires. They've been on the past three three of my trailers I've had that Bass Cat's done for me. So never had an issue with them. Great on the road. Uh, from the back here, um, we got, I went with, this is an option. I believe you can get one light. Uh, I went with two backup reverse lights here. So I got one on each side of the trailer. Um, that's pretty much it for the trailer. I uh, got the stalker rim up front too in my spare tire. Got that right there. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. So uh, real quick, I want to talk about this real quick. The, uh, right here you got the, um, I guess the double roller system here. Some people wonder why Bass Cat has that. As you can see right now, I have my uh, strap underneath there. Um, the reason they do that. So, okay, so say you don't pull up far enough at the ramp, you can run it here winch it up on your on your trailer and when you're when you're traveling i like to run it underneath here and what that's going to do is pull the front of the boat down so you won't get any bounce or anything like that they're like one of the only companies i believe that has that and some people ask why or wonder why we have two rollers up front that's exactly why so um let's talk about the boat now. let's go to the boat so as you can see you got the wrap on here got all my you know all my sponsors up here all the people that help me out throughout the years and uh, I've got some new ones and um, got some old ones, some ones that have been with me a while. So love to represent great companies. All of them are great, great people, uh, great products. So, um, you know, we, we're talking about the Mercury 250 Pro XS. Gotta have that. Got the power poles on here. Um, got a hydraulic jack plate. Gotta have that as well. Fish in shallow water, as always. Gotta have the, uh, gotta have the jack plate power poles like i said must have gotta have them some sort of shallow water anchor whatever you whatever you prefer but i prefer the power poles it's all i've ever had on any of my boats so and again old trusty there never let me down never has let me down um gets me there and back never have to worry about it cranking in the morning it always starts up and uh just gets me to where i need to go so that is the outside of the boat again huge shout out to rappable right here wrappable for doing the wrap this year we went with a uh i think it's called a bath salt like a gray color and uh i got like black gloss on it also so we went with like a matte like a it's like a satin finish and then we went with the black on it as well so you can kind of see it there in the light it looks pretty sweet so really happy with it turned out great and uh now we are going to i guess jump inside the boat show you guys the inside show you my mounts how we got everything laid out all right, so we're here on the back deck. Um, new back deck layout for this year in the Bass Cat era. Uh, again, this is a 2021. So they redesigned the uh, the deck on this boat. There's some features that are, you know, I, I really believe they changed the entire deck of the boat. Um, you know, the front lids are still the same, but there's little features that you don't notice unless you've had one before um, that I've noticed. So 
Real quick, we're gonna start on the back deck here of the boat uh, and the battery box. So, one of the coolest features, and I'll show you something that Bass Cat did this year different from my years past of running this boat. Um, I've always ran this model. Again, this is the era. Um, I've ran this model. It's the only model I've ever ran. To me, it's, it's the fastest. It's kind of like a little sports car. I love it. Um, and I'm 6'7", so this boat fits me. I just, and so for those of you tall people out there that want to have, or that don't think this boat can handle you because you're too tall, it's a great boat for tall people. So, um, real quick, bass cat back here. Uh, they leave little open spots on both sides. This is the driver's side here. I keep the toolbox in here uh, and a weigh-in bag, just in case I gotta, you know, get in to weigh in. I run Duracell AGM batteries. Um, I've never had an issue with them, ever. Um, knock on wood, I've never had a problem with them. Uh, for my starting battery, I run an X2 Power from Batteries Plus. Uh, that's my starting battery. Uh, they are heavy, they're heavy batteries, but like I said, I've never had an issue with them. They've been great. Uh, Bass Cat, uh, here's my fuel tank. 52 gallons this boat holds, so I can run pretty much anywhere and not have to worry about gas. So that's this side. Another cool feature about the bass cap is the back lids are removable. So if you ever have to get in here, change your pumps, all your pumps and everything are right here. Super easy to access and, uh, and you know, if you have to change any out for whatever reason. But removable lids, super easy to put back on and uh, you're good to go. So that's that side. Uh, I'll quick show you this other side. Basically the same, really nothing different gas tank batteries right down in there you want to look down in there show you the uh that's where all the pumps and everything are okay and i got a little open spot here for tools whatever i need to put in there as you can see i got some wheel chalks in there that is that very simple so here's where the boat changes okay so for those of you that have the bass cat era uh you know 2020 or later years or earlier years this is where the boat's different this year in 2021. So uh, start off on the back passenger side box. As you can see, it opens up as a triangle now. Back, you know, my last year's model had a square lid. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, you have a little bit more storage in here, a little easier to access. Um, and here I keep a spare prop. I keep um, top secret stuff. I really shouldn't show you all this stuff, but so in here I keep all of my mag drafts. I got dark sleepers in here. Mag drafts. These just never leave the boat. They stay in the boat all the time. Uh, just in case, for whatever reason, I'm feeling like catching a big fish. Uh, or I have my limit and I want to catch a big one. I always throw that. Again, that's the mag draft. Uh, keep the scale in here. This is my spare scale, actually. So I keep my scale in here. Uh, this dude here is a lifesaver. So this here is a NOCO boost uh, jumper box, basically. So for whatever reason, if I ever have a battery go down, I can plug this in and I have a cool little uh, plug on my boat here. I'll show you. I got to show you that. I need to show you that. So real quick, if I ever have an issue out on the water where my batteries die, I could take this NOCO boost charger here plug it right in here and everything is already rigged up this is hooked up my positive and my negative on my on my starting battery all I do plug it in hit power go up there turn the motor cranks right up so that's my little uh, system there just in case I have any battery failure I can do it really quick it's super quick too so for those of you that are in the market for a uh, for an awesome little boost box, this is it right here. I want to say you can get them for like $100, 150 bucks. So, but that's a lifesaver, uh, and I believe it's good up to like six jumps. So, you jump one day, you have like five more to go. So, uh, and then you just charge it and it's fully charged. So, I keep that back here. Comes in a little case. Pretty cool. Cool little product. Like I said, it's a lifesaver. So I keep them in here or this in here. along with my, uh, these are glide baits. So again, something I always have to keep in the boat. Got some, some top secret glide baits there. Got some cool glide baits there, some custom painted ones. And I keep 
Tam back in here. Now here's where the boat's different. So this is what I want to show y'all. So this here is a little tray, removable tray. And there you have your power pole pumps. Also your screens for your live well. You can quick change them out, clean them out if you have to. Um, if you have any power pole issues with your pumps, easy access, easy to get to. Uh, and then just little storage trays. Now these drain out, if you have any issues with that. They drain out, they just fit right in there. All I keep in there, these are extra calling tags. I just keep them in there, spare ones. Um, another feature that you probably don't know about um, that I noticed right away um, is the live well lids. They've gotten bigger. The live well lids have gotten bigger. The entry into the live well has gotten a lot bigger. Uh, so for those of you that catch giants all the time, they'll fit in the live wells a lot easier now. Lids are bigger. Uh, the live well, it's just, it's perfect. Little things like that that I've noticed on this boat that I really love. Uh, same thing on this side. And again, got the triangular live wells. Bass Cat's known for that. Uh, I get asked a lot uh, by a lot of people why they do that. Um, so in your square live wells, your traditional live wells that are square, uh, your fish are kind of jammed in there. You get a big one, they're kind of crammed in there. Whereas here, they can fit this way. I mean, you can fit like a 10 pounder in there and it's gonna lay just straight. It's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be comfortable and uh, the fish won't get stressed out. So that's why you run the triangular live wells. And here I got a bungee cord with my, uh, my calling tags here. And bass, we're not allowed to use the penetrating ones. So these are made by TH Marine. It's the G-Force calling system. Got them in there. And uh, now we're gonna go to this box. Again, got that same style, same style lid. This is where I keep basically all of my, my hats, uh, my amphibious sunglasses. Keep them in here. Got those in here. Got my amphibious in here. Um, keep some of my waypoint chips. Got to keep them in there. Keep them organized, dry. Uh, this is a really dry boat too. Basket makes a super dry boat. I've never had any issues with water getting in any of my boxes. Uh, so yeah, keep my amphibias in there. A lot of my net gaiters, my AFCO net gaiters. Um, hand warmers. Just got back from a tournament on uh, Lay Lake in Alabama. It was freaking freezing. Uh, so I went through some hand warmers. I keep them in there too. So that's that very simple i like this kind of like my everyday box i kind of i use it every day hats glasses uh that gator stuff like that so this box get used, gets used a lot this one's right behind the seat here so. all right so here we are in the cockpit area of the boat um again some little features that bass cats have done they changed some things um they had a cup holders down here at the bottom by the seats um not sure if you can see them but they're right here in the bottom um they got rid of the cup holders that were here. They also got rid of the glove box that was right here uh, in the boat, which I use for basically all my plastics throughout the day. When you use plastics, I just throw them there. At the end of the day, I just take them out, throw them in the trash can. So um, that's the little things that I've noticed that Bass Cats changed. Your storage under the seats. And here I keep all my dip and dies, my Sharpies. Uh, I got a toolbox in there, my fire extinguisher, and my spare. Uh, TH Marine uh, G-Force calling system, my uh, my balance beam. So, a uh, little tip for y'all if you ever have any issues with six fish in your live well, take one of your tags out. Don't put six tags in your live well. That's how you end up in trouble. So, that's a little tip for y'all. Always keep my sixth one under my seat. I don't use it. So, that's that. Very simple. Simple stuff under the seat there. Under this seat, I keep some rope. Keep a lot of rope under there. Um, dock line, some towels in case I need to, uh, you know, wipe the boat off, make it look good. Um, which I do that pretty much every time I pull the boat out, just to keep it, keep it looking good. Uh, right here, Bass Cat, we got the uh, this little glove box here, which I actually use for my phone, my keys. Uh, I keep some some screen cleaner in there, little towel, wipe the electronics off when I'm done fishing. I can't stand having dirty electronic screens. Uh, you know when I'm when I'm going fishing so that's that under here now we got a cooler so in here I keep my drinks for the day ice lasts forever um, I could fit about 10 waters in there some bottles of soda and I'm good for the day so that's my cooler and then right here this is actually a cooler so there's two coolers in this boat 
This year, since there's no cup holders here, I'm utilizing this as storage. So I love having a ton of tackle on the boat. You're gonna notice this boat is loaded and I run it that way every time. I always have everything I need. So um, like I said, it might slow me down, but I have what I need. So um, I utilize this now for storage. Uh, as you can see in here, I got my treble hooks. Keep my treble hooks in here. Uh, some of my, my wacky tool stuff. Kind of a little knick-knack box here, you know, with some stuff in it that I might use throughout the day. Uh, keep my tools in here, my pliers, my scissors. Um, stuff I use every single day I keep in here. So, easy to get in and out. You know, it's right here easy to work with I don't keep you'll notice you noticed on the back deck I don't keep any tackle in there other than those swim baits that's all I keep in the back of the boat some people run them different they keep their weights and terminal tackle in the boat I prefer to keep mine up here just because I know it's all up here so you know in a, in a bass master tournament an open we have co-anglers so they're in the back of the boat throughout the day I don't want to have to go to the back of the boat to work on tackle or to get something and interfere with them fishing you know this is kind of my platform that's there so I want to stay out of their hair and uh, it just makes it easier with all my tackle being up here. So that's this box again, super dry. I fished in, at, uh, in, in Alabama uh, and it, it rained one whole day for you know the, the entire day. All my tackle stayed dry. So that's that. Now we're going to move to the front of the boat. Um, but real quick, I want to talk to you guys about my mounts here. Um, Right here I run two Lowrance HDS-12 live units. Now this is my first year running dual units on the same mount. I used to run one in the console and one out to the side. This year I'm running, uh, this is a Boat Logics mount. It's a dual mount. It is freaking solid. I mean, it's not going nowhere. The whole console is gonna come off the boat before I lose any of my electronics. So um, that's here. Um, my dad actually came up with this. It's pretty cool. I use a tablet a lot um, when I'm fishing. I hook it up to my mapping, and uh, when I'm in the hotel, I can go in, go through my maps, uh, and then come back out here and transfer everything to my unit. So uh, I have a little RAM mount here with my, uh, this is just a little tablet, just a Samsung tablet that I use here. Take that into the hotel, you know, put it here. And I can even run it on my graph, or run it right here while I'm driving. I could see everything right there. So that's a cool little mount there uh, that I added on to my Boat Logics mount. So again, if you're in the market, you have a Bass Cat, you need to check out Boat Logics if you're in the market for any type of mount. They make the best mounts. They're solid, they don't move. Um, nobody's gonna come over here and rip your units off and take them. Uh, another thing I use is these Dura Safe locks that keep people from just coming by and taking them off. The honest people. Keeps the honest people from ripping them off. So uh, right here, got my Scotia uh, cell phone mount. Got that from my buddy Carl Jockinson. Hooks me up with that. Uh, put my cell phone there, it doesn't go anywhere. So awesome little mount there. Tons of room. I don't know if you can see. I can see over these mounts perfectly. I got tons of leg room here. I can, you know, drive. My legs fully extended. Again, I'm 6'7", so this boat, you know, it works good for me. It's a good boat. Uh, I got plenty of leg room. Good, good boat for tall people. So, it's my little station right here. So, that's that. That's the console. Got the boat logics mounts there. Now we're gonna move up to the front real quick. So, let me show you guys the front of the boat. All right. So now we're gonna get to the front deck of the boat, and then we will talk about the office right there, the Lawrence office, loaded with Lawrence stuff. So, uh, we'll, we'll get into that here in a second. We're gonna start off with the, this is the driver's side rod box. So, um, and here, like I said, I carry a ton of tackle. So uh, as you can see in here, I keep some spinning rods. I do not like keeping my spinning rods with my bait casters because it just, you'll see why, because I have like a hundred bait casters in there. But, um, so yeah, I keep some of my Daiwa spinning rods and reels in here, uh, life jackets, keep them in here. Um, my weights, my terminal tackle, um, pull these out real quick so I can show you guys uh, really cool check this out I keep these flambo boxes in here these are really sweet like this one's got swing heads shaky heads my drop shot Ned stuff my underspins and this one and they sit in here I got them in a little tray they sit in here super nice they're super organized 
I'm like a freak when it comes to being organized. So I keep everything in here. Uh, keep leader line in here. My buzz baits. Uh, in here I have some of my rain gear. Keep some of my jerk baits in here. And then again, more, I shouldn't show you guys this. This is good stuff here. These are probably the best. They are the best swim baits on the market when it comes to soft swim baits. So these are uh, all my Scottsboro tackle swim baits. I shouldn't even show you guys. That's top secret stuff. But if you want a great swim bait, check out Scottsboro tackle. They make the best swim baits uh, on the market for sure. So um, that's that again. Very simple, but very organized. I love being organized, so my rods fit in here good. Keep my spinning rods in there. And uh, so that's what I keep in that box. This box, we will go to, we'll do this side. It's my other rod box, or my rod box again. Keep my spinning rods in there. Got all my Daiwas in here. Uh, one thing I do do, I do not get the rod organizer in here. I tell Bass Cat to keep it out. Um, and they send it with the boat. You know, if the next person that purchases it wants to, you know, get it in the boat, I have it. But uh, I take it out. I feel like I can put more rods in there. Um, if you notice here on the back wall, I have the little um, rod organizer there for the butts of your rods. Um, I put all my treble hook baits on the top. That way they don't get down there and mixed up with all the rod socks and get all tangled up so i do utilize that but again i don't use the back one because i don't i don't feel like i can fit as many rods in there as i like so that's that very simple um now we will go to this box um basically same old same old lots of tackle i'll open this one too for y'all to see uh coffin style lids on this boat this is what this boat's known for uh, I added this here. This is a TH Marine Tackle Titan. As you can see, I got a bait on there. Um, keep my plastics in here. A lot of it is Reaction Innovations. I got like my Man Bear Pig Box loaded out there. I got my Twerks. Just got back from Alabama. Throwing a lot of jigs. Gotta have your Twerks. Look at that. Loaded up there on Twerks. Um, Oh, we're, we're down here in Florida, so we got to throw the beaver. Got the beaver going. Um, there we go. All my favorite colors. I don't carry a lot of plastics. I tend to, uh, you know, restock when I get home or whatever. Uh, I keep it very simple with my colors. So that's that. A lot of plastics. Um, right here, I keep all my hard baits, my, my top waters, my traps. Again, super easy to get in and out. Just keep them in there. Uh, and then my hooks. I keep my hooks in this box, Bass Mafia box. Keep all my hooks in there. So everything stays dry, super neat, organized. Um, and this storage actually goes way up underneath the deck of the boat here. So uh, I got stuff tucked up underneath there. I got like chatter baits, stuff like that. Uh, stuff I don't need to get to all the time. So that's that, the tackle storage there. All right, and then all right, so now here we got my day box. Um, pretty simple. So I keep it very clean in here. This is my scale. This is a columnite scale. I use this in all the tournaments. Uh, you know, that way I'm very accurate on my weights, what I have. Uh, and then right here, as you can see, I keep my tools up here. So not like wrenches and stuff. These are all everyday fishing tools, razor blade. Uh, I do keep, you know, my wacky tools. I got my spike it pens, uh, my hook sharpeners extra scissors lighter just my everyday tools that i use fishing i keep some nail weights in there stuff like that um and this is like a little carousel thing i got from my mom's kitchen uh you know it's 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 actually for you know spoons knives stuff like that but it fits great in this boat and uh it just keeps everything organized and right there so very simple not too much up here uh easy access to get things in and out and um when the tournament comes around and I'm catching them on like a, I don't know, a spicy beaver, uh, what I'll do is I'll throw like three bags in there. Super easy access, in and out. Uh, your rods aren't in the way. And if it starts raining like I had in Alabama a few weeks ago, the only box that's getting wet, wet is this one when I open it. So I don't have to worry about, you know, any of my stuff getting wet from opening boxes in and out. 
and uh, that just works great. So that's how I use the day box there, and uh, that's that's kind of what I do. So that's that. Uh, went with the bungee rod straps this year. Um, I love them. I mean, they, they seem to be working great. In the past, I've went with the retractable ones. Um, I have had issues with those in the past, just breaking, like, I guess the little spring in them, just, I don't know. And that seems to be everybody that's ever ran them. Um, other manufacturers have the same issues with, with their boats. I've used boats in the past that have had the same types of issues, but I really like these. Mounted them on the lid this year, so I can actually open my rod box so my rods don't fall in the lake. Uh, my dad gave me that tip, so I did it. So thanks, Dad, for the tip. And um, we're going to jump to the front of the boat here, and uh, I'm going to show you guys the front. I'm going to hop out of the boat, and my cameraman, a.k.a. Dad, a.k.a. Pops, is going to stand right here, and I'm going to show you guys the front of the boat. All right, so here we are at the front of the boat, uh, like Lorant Central right here. We got tons of Lorant stuff. Um, this is probably my favorite setup I've ran so far. Uh, I was able to fish one tournament out of it uh, a few weeks ago in Alabama, and I love this setup. This is by far my favorite setup I've had up front here. Uh, and the main reason is because I'm running this dual boat logics mount. Um, so for those of you that have a bass cut out there, out there that are looking to run a dual mount setup, uh, definitely look into this mount. It's super clean, gives you tons of room up here for your foot, um, keeps the deck clean, got tons of room, and uh, it's just super neat, clean, and organized, and that's what I love about it. So. Um, as you can see, we're running two graphs here. I got a Lowrance HDS Live 9 right here and a Lowrance HDS uh, Live 12. So what I'm going to run the 9 for is the new active targeting uh, transducer. Uh, I'm still waiting on that. Should be getting here in the next few weeks, hopefully. And, uh, and then the 12, I run strictly my down scan, my traditional sonar, and my mapping. So that's what I run on the 12. I run the uh, active target transducer on the 9 when I get that. Um, as you can see, the Hydro Wave, got to have that. True believer in the Hydro Wave. That's made by TH Marine. Um, also, as you can see, the Ghost. We got the Ghost there. Um, by far the best trolling motor I've ever had. Uh, I've been running one now for about, I don't know, a year now. I ran one on the last boat. Um, I ran it for like six months on the last boat. I got it right when it came out. Uh, put it on the last boat. I sold that boat and now that one uh, is to somebody else. But um, this boat had to get the Lowrance Ghost again, just a beast trolling motor. Great in the grass. Um, down here in Florida, our lakes are loaded with grass, tons of grass, uh, and it, it cuts through it. So it does a good job. Another thing about it right here, it has the spring on the knuckle there. So if you, if you run into a tree, uh, I've seen them torture tested um, in the past. So uh, you run into a tree, you don't have to worry about your whole shaft exploding. It's got the spring in here. It kind of like, you know, slows it down and it comes right back to form. So uh, that's a must have. I know some of your other brands of trolling motors out there do not have that. If you hit something, you're in trouble. So uh, must have on your boat, Lowrance Ghost. If you're looking in the, if you're in the market for a brand new trolling motor, definitely check them out. Another cool feature on the Lowrance Ghost is you can change it from 36 to 24 volts. So for those of you that are running smaller boats uh, or, or looking at buying a new boat in the next couple years and you have a smaller boat, you can buy this trolling motor, run it on 24 volts in your, in your current boat, and then when you feel like upgrading or when you can upgrade to a bigger boat, uh, you can still put this trolling motor on that boat and run it on 36 volts because um, you have that option. So other, other manufacturers, other brands, you don't have that option. So this one you do. Uh, again, I'm all about being neat, organized, and clean. This, this, this trolling motor does it. Has a little spot here for all your cables. Everything stays organized. Uh, comes with a wire, uh, like tough. This, this cord's not gonna break. Uh, it's a cable. And then right up underneath here, I, I got my power pole foot switches. I keep them tucked up there underneath the trolling motor. Real clean, neat. Don't step on them when you're getting in and out of the boat. So uh, another cool feature here, Basscat does, they put a battery tender plug on their boats. All of them are like this. Quick disconnect for your trolling motor there. Uh, they, they even sell a charging system. You can charge your boat from the front here to the back by this battery tender plug. So that's it. Super easy, uh, super clean. I love this boat. Uh, can't wait to fish next year out of it, 2021. Hopefully it's going to be a great season. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, you know, hit subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. 
Uh, I'm going to try to grow this YouTube channel as much as I can. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time, but um, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Again, like, subscribe, whatever. If you have any questions also on the boat, just write it down in the comments. You know, find me on social media at Cody Detweiler Fishing. I'm um, there on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions on the boat or want to know anything, just comment below, write to me, instant message me, whatever you want to do, and I will answer your questions. So that's it. That's the boat for 2021. Hopefully we have a great season and you all enjoyed the video. See you all next time.